Today, we will be ranking every healer from easiest to hardest in PvP. Of course, many players consider healing to be the hardest role in Dragonflight, whether it's going 4-2 and two and losing MMR, or getting griefed by your partners. So if you're wanting an easier experience, we're looking for simple rotations, good emergency buttons, and passive playstyles. If a spec can meet all of this criteria while being flexible and hard to grief in solo shuffle, it will have a lower skill floor, which means an easier time climbing the ladder. And if you're watching this video looking for a new spec to play, Skill Capped has everything you need to climb rating instantly in the new season. From class guides, arena fundamentals, game knowledge, and more, our courses are specifically designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals faster than you thought possible. We do this by only working with the best and most experienced players around, who will now even review your gameplay and offer personalized advice for climbing. Everything we offer is backed up by a rank of guarantee where we literally promise you will gain rating while using our service. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount links below. For now, back to the video. For the majority of Season 3, Resto Druid was considered the strongest healer, but does that make it the easiest? Typically, when people talk about Druid being easy, they point to its strong healing output. And it's true, Resto Druid arguably has the best single target healing in the game. But unlike other healers, being good at Resto Druid means becoming very proactive with your globals. Instead of reacting to damage as it happens, Druids also need to plan ahead, spending multiple globals to ramp their heals well in advance, because failing to do so can put them really far behind later on. Falling behind is a big problem, since outside of nature's swiftness, Druids don't really have a strong option to instantly deny a kill. Now, it's true that the introduction of Treants definitely solved some of these recovery problems with the spec, and with the return of the Season 3 tier set, Druids are looking strong going into the next patch. But to truly succeed as a Druid in high ratings, you need to carefully balance out healing with offensive play. Even though Cyclone might torment players at lower ratings, better players are quick to stop it and will punish over-aggression. Anyway, with a mix of strong healing output and careful proactive play, Resto Druid will be going into the medium difficulty tier. Preservation Evoker is widely considered to be one of the most challenging healers to play, but why? Of course, most people would point to its limited range and awkward positional requirements, but Preservation also has a relatively janky healing rotation. Between a mixture of maintenance heals and modifier stacking, healing as an Evoker is not that straightforward and needs more careful sequencing. On the bright side, Evoker will be getting its Season 1 tier set next patch, which should make its healing rotation feel more fluid. The reason the spec did exceptionally well on the 3v3 ladder towards the end of Season 3 was due to the fact that its cooldowns do a good job at countering big sources of coordinated burst damage. And on top of this, Evoker is probably the most aggressive healer, with lots of options to contribute to kills, whether it's damage or micro CC. So in order to truly do well as an Evoker, you really need to manage cooldowns well while having a good vision of the arena. If you aren't careful with your disruptions or mismanaged positioning, that can lead to inefficient cooldown usage pretty easily. So as a healer that continues to demand a lot out of players, Preservation Evoker will be going on our hardest tier. Moving on, let's cover the first of our two monk specs, starting with the traditional caster. While it's definitely fallen out of popularity, the traditional caster monk is actually a good option for beginners. The spec has retained a traditional healer feel and still adopts a very passive playstyle, relying on raw healing output rather than needing to make aggressive offensive plays. Like some other healers, Monk CC is on a relatively long cooldown, which really limits its offensive options and allows players to focus more on actual healing. As a beginner, this is crucial, since learning how to avoid CC is a key tenet of being a good healer, and since you don't need to focus much on offensive play, you can grind this skill no problem. The main downside of Mistweaver Monk is that it can be easy to grief by DPS, since in order to actually heal, monks need to plant their feet and channel for a few seconds. This means any overextending DPS will make it pretty frustrating by luring you into positions where you are more vulnerable to kicks and CC. So even though it might be a really passive healer, Caster Mistweaver can get griefed quite easily and will be going into our medium tier. While the Caster Mistweaver has a traditional healer feel, Fistweaver is obviously built much different. From the outside looking in, Fistweaver is one of the most obnoxious healers to deal with, especially if you are a caster since it means more kicks and micro CC. But this perspective is key to understanding what truly makes a good Fistweaver monk, and why it might not be as straightforward as many players think. In order to truly succeed as a Fistweaver, you need to take a radically different approach compared to most traditional healers. In order to stay ahead, you need to win with pressure since your healing output is directly related to uptime. And just like some of the other healers we've covered, Pushing in and being constantly exposed means needing to adjust to a different mentality when it comes to cooldowns, using them very proactively to prevent falling behind. So in many ways, you need to play two roles at once, being a proactive healer and an aggressive melee at the same time. 
Fist Weaver is one of those healers that tends to do well at the highest end of the 3v3 ladder and even solo shuffle, but can easily fall flat at lower ratings since its playstyle is pretty obscure. So while it might seem like a hot take, we're actually putting Fist Weaver on the same tier as its more conventional spec. Disc Priest has a reputation of being a more technical healer, so how does its difficulty shape up? By Blizzard's own admission, Disc Priest was way too complicated for most of Dragonflight, to the point where the spec saw a major rework to make it less confusing to play. And while it's true the spec did get marginally easier, Disc is still very bloated. Between Atonement Healing and Shadow Covenant Windows, the spec has very inconsistent HPS. What makes it an S tier healer in Mythic Plus is the ability to stand still and vape with damage. But as you know, that's not really possible in PvP, which causes some severe structural issues and makes it incredibly punishing to fall behind. Because of this, Disc Priests need to be incredibly proactive with their defensive cooldowns, timing pain suppression and barrier during very specific moments before CC lands in order to make recovery even possible. Fortunately, what Disc manages better than most is Interrupts, as now Radiance is also on the fire school of all things, and Penance can periodically become Shadow, which means Disc has three total schools to work with. Regardless, with inconsistent HPS and strict proactive cooldowns, Disc will actually be going in the hard category. Recently, Holy has appeared to be better than Disc in every bracket and seems to be regaining popularity. While the spec has a reputation of being an aggressive healer in a comp like RMP, these days Holy Priest takes a more traditional passive role, focusing on making conservative defensive plays while trying to min-max healing output. This is definitely the case in Solo Shuffle, where a key part of finding success as Holy boils down to making efficient cooldown trades and avoiding CC. This is why Angel Form is such a pivotal cooldown to master in the bracket, since using it at the right time can cut down on healing stress considerably. And while Holy has adapted a more passive playstyle, it still can contribute to damage, especially after a recent mini rework in the 10.2.6 patch, where the spec received a redesign to Imperial Blaze. Overall, Holy Priest continues to be a very passive healer with a fairly straightforward rotation, consisting of powerful instant casts. Because of all this, Holy will be making its way to the easy tier. In the past, we've recommended Holy Paladin as a good healer for beginners, but is this still true in Season 4? Statistically, players tend to do better with Holy Paladin compared to Resto Druid and Solo Shuffle at both the Rival and Duelist benchmarks. But why? Just like Holy Priest, the Paladin rotation is pretty straightforward and will be getting slightly easier next patch with the return of the Season 2 tier set, which helps smooth out their rotation with Holy Prism, meaning Paladins will have to rely less on hard casting. The real learning curve is knowing how and when to sequence CDs, since Holy Paladin has a bunch of them. Now, in some ways, this is a double-edged sword. Having more CDs gives you more control, but messing up your CDs is a one-way ticket to a minus 30 rating. With great power comes great responsibility or something. Holy Paladins are also pretty vulnerable to getting trained in melee-heavy lobbies, which is a problem many healers don't really have to deal with. But with a pretty simple rotation and lots of cooldowns to work with, Holy Paladin will be making it to the easy tier once again. Our final healer is one that has seen a radical shift in design over the years. Like Holy Paladin, Resto Shaman has a pretty simple rotation built around three instant buttons more or less. Healing as a Shaman really isn't the hard part. Instead, Shaman is just like Evoker in the sense that being a micro disruptor is really what makes the spec work. Over the years, Resto Shaman has evolved into a true tempo-based healer, and what really determines your success is how much you can maximize every GCD, whether it's wind shearing a cast, grounding a CC, lassoing a DPS, or using static field totem to yoink people away. You really need to do a lot of stuff as a Shaman that requires keeping an active vision over the entire arena. Next season, Shamans might actually have some healing problems with the loss of their best PvP tier set, which adds even more pressure to be disruptive. Since Resto Shaman requires you to think more like a DPS, it will be going in the hardest tier. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that's it for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.